Mic test one two. What? what? Mic test one two. Is that your mic test? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mic test. Mic test. I can't make you meta mepa. What language is it? Yoruba. <laughs> is it? What did you say? You dissing me, is it? No, no, no. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Yeah. You actually speak it fluently? Nah. So you just like front in the. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yourself. No, no, no. I, I, I speak a little bit of Yoruba. I'm is actually it? quite good at it. But not fluent though. Nah. Ah. I will be. Shame, shame, shame. How are you, were you taking lessons? Nah, I just learn from films. I pick, <laughs> it, I pick it up on conversations. <laughs> You're going to pick up all the dramatic stuff though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's why yeah. I, I know a lot of cuss words in your bar, obviously, because of Go parents. Go and drop me one. What's like, your favourite? Ah, oh, see, now I can't think of it because I haven't used it in so long. Yeah. But I'll just use a PG one, Abasha. What does that mean? Abasha means rubbish. Or oh, Olori oh, Buruku. Wow. That used that to be... Deep. That yeah, yeah. Deep. Now that, that's really insulting. Yeah. Obviously, I don't really know what it means, but yeah. The only one I know is Kilo something? Kilo that, Shele? That's not even a Kilo word, Shele it? means mm. what's going on, like what's happening. Oh, sick. Yeah. Oh, that means we're on the right path then. So, totally Kilo shit. I, I'm, the, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Welcome How to Let's Do Humans podcast, by the way. We started recording a few couple of seconds ago, but... <laughs> I just thought we'd just gradually get in there. Okay. Since we're both like... You know what? I kind of club, so yeah, it's calm. <laughs> so you're, you're in the game. Yeah, you're yeah. In the game. Of course. Going, Everything's fine, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm do good. people ever ask you how you are? Really? But I do appreciate when they do ask. Yeah. Can you yeah, because like, what about me? Do you know what I mean? Me yeah, too. Yeah. Like, I need, yeah. I need care as well. I of need course attention you do. as well. Of course you do. You know what I mean? Because it's always about the guest though, at the end of the day. Because when it comes down to my podcast, it's about me having a conversation with someone. Yeah. So I'm hosting them in my place. Yeah, so definitely. But I'm, once I'm in a while, we need yeah. to know that you're good as well. I'm, so. good. I'm surviving. And I'm enjoying good. what I'm doing now. That's so good. I can I'm see that. I'm in a that. good place. Yeah, I can't complain. I can see that. But before we get started, before I even ask you who you are and what is it that you do, I'm going to give you a little stat that I just found recently. Well, not recently, this morning actually. Funny enough, which is very reason so this morning i was just doing a bit of reading prior to having you come on here yeah? okay and um something hit me it was like a mini epiphany so are you are you a part of the men are trash movement no nah. oh fantastic high five <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm not <laughs> Funny enough, yeah, so i came to some weird like mathematical conclusion yeah that yeah. men can't actually all be trash yeah, they it's can't. Like, it's like a mathematical... But I, I got this thing worked out, yeah? So I was watching a bit of content from everywhere because based on what we're going to talk about, which yeah. is obviously your article that you wrote for the Metro on marriage and stuff. Yeah. So I've been reading into statistics and I read that um, a lot of the dating websites, they done they recently done a lot of statistics as in, as in, in regards to like the type of men that um, women go for. Mm. And there's the 80-20 rule. I'm sure you've heard of it. What, as in us women give 80 and no. men give 20 So back. the concept behind it is that 80% of women are after 20% of men. Are after 20%? Yes. As in yeah. their looks? No, so like as in overall. So 20% of men are considered the most desirable by majority of women. And everyone is competing for those for that 20%. Okay. So in terms of like the men that they find most desirable, whether it will be like financially, whether it will be look-wise, whether it will be, I don't know, the, the masculine energy that they carry, but 80% of women are attracted to and are chasing 20% of men. Which then narrows it down to, so, so then my idea behind the whole like men are trash thing doesn't work is that basically if it's 20% of guys that women are chasing and they're giving the power to all of these men, what do you expect the behaviour of these men to be like when they're giving all of these options? All the power to the men. All, all the power to the 20% men that the women are after. Do you get it? Does it make sense to you? No. Okay, let me break up. So if you go into a party and there's 10 women and 10 dudes... Eight of those ten women, women, ten, ten dudes. dudes. Okay. Eight of those women will most likely fancy only two of those men. Okay. Do you get it? But then surely that means as men, you guys should level up. No. Ooh, decent. But what I'm trying to say is that the whole concept behind like men are trash, it doesn't work mathematically because not all men are trash. If all women are only going for a small percentage of the yeah. men available within the market. Yeah. But you have, you, have you looked? behind the whole movement of men are trash no i couldn't be bothered with that, I, and i completely hate the movement no, in the first no, no. place <laughs> it, I, I don't yeah. think it has much to do with like the 80 20 rule mm. i feel like the men are trash mm -hmm. often is a result of situations that's happened mm -hmm. between two parties but, but how, do, how do all women universally agree on something so are they are they are we under the assumption that 
all the men that these women have dated are all trash? Or is it or is it a coincidence that all of these women are dating the same men? Do you know what I mean? That no, are they I, causing them to come up with this conclusion that all men are trash? No, I think it's that a lot of women mm. are facing the same type of situation. From the same type of men. Think about it. From the same type of men. Yeah, so so what, what happens is, so let's go back to this party scenario again. Yeah. I'm going to break it down. So we're, we're back at this party scenario. Okay. These eight ladies are all chasing two dudes yeah. out of ten. Yeah. So then the eight dudes that are left are, nev- are never really given that opportunity. Yeah. Because if you, if you believe in female hypergamy, then that means that ideally all of these women would go for the, the top tier men. Yeah. So then the, the, the experiences that they will have would come from only these two dudes. Okay. And not the remaining eight who could potentially be wonderful matches, but due to female hypergamy, they would only prefer to chase these two dudes. Okay. So now eight women are coming towards two dudes. Each dude is going to end up with four women <laughs> and end up having all of this power and all of these women's yeah. attention. Mm-hmm. So eventually, it's going to cause this case where they, they're going to mistreat them because they've got all this power, they've got all these but, options. But why are you men mistreating o- ops- women? It's not men are mistreating women. Options can cause problems when you have too options. many of them. Okay, see, that's you the problem. Mean? That's, yeah. that's another that's, issue. That's the problem. Yeah. There's too many options mm-hmm. within social media. And with social media being yeah. around, it's very hard for everyone to say, okay, mm. I like this. I'm going to stick to this yeah. person. I think back in the days, there was no social media for like our parents yeah. and the generations before us. So yeah. whenever they saw that girl that they liked, there yeah. wasn't anyone to necessarily throw them, of course, oh, of course if you get yeah. what I mean. Most but definitely. now it's just a matter of, oh, yeah. you're acting up goodbye yeah. and literally that's yeah. what it is yeah it, it works both ways because now like the options is there for the men and women but yeah, at the 100. same time you, you end up seeing that most of the women are chasing the same dudes in yeah. essence yeah. you see what i mean because women are more likely to what date upwards mm-hmm. in terms of majority of things so then what happens to the dudes that are not within that bracket of desirability do you see what i mean yeah, yeah. but to be fair i feel mm. like women date on both ends of the str- of the spectrum <sighs> What you, you, go on, elaborate. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of women say that, you know, we want men that are successful, that are ambitious, yeah. and that, you know, they're, they're driven in yeah. their careers. But then a lot of the time, mm. in reality, I, you must have seen that a lot of girls will mm. then settle for the potential that the guy has are, and are will be though? open to building them up, even though <laughs> they're not even showing signs <laughs> but, of... Of doing the things that they yeah. initially said that they will do. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? So I feel like... So what happens then They don't they... necessarily date up. They're mm. on both sides. So, so what happens you're, if you the know guy doesn't... you you're talking to someone that's girl power as I, well? I know, so I know. That's what, I'm, tra- that's what I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get the information out of you by putting various scenarios. Okay. That's, that's my whole purpose behind it. I don't necessarily believe in it. The majority of these views anyway. Okay. But uh, <laughs> okay. some of them I do. I'll, yeah. I'll let you know which ones. Okay. Um, so then, okay. So you, you said, so the guy, uh, the ladies would date the guys here who had potential. And then yeah. if they don't show potential, what then happens? Depending on the love mm. and the source. No, I'm joking. Yeah. What <laughs> is love? <laughs> Depending on yeah. the type of emotion they yeah. feel for the guy. Mm. Um, majority of guy, majority of girls are very loving mm-hmm. and they will try their most, depending on their level of, um, how can yeah. I say it? Maturity. Depending on their capacity to deal with you, mm. a lot of them will be willing to stick around to help mm. you do what it is mm. that you need to do, especially if they believe in you. Yeah. But it, it all but depends on the... Ha- have you noticed people. that... So, okay, so why is the emphasis on the man being able to then establish himself and get into that position whereby it, it pleases the woman? So have you noticed that with guys, for instance, like, we're, we're, happily, we're happy to date downwards. It's just, it's just a thing. Do like, you men date downwards? Oh, 100%. So, like, for instance, if I was to date a girl, I wouldn't necessarily care what her salary is or what her capacity to... To provide. take it, provide and to take care of me and to protect me is. Do you see what I mean? No dudes date. No, none of my boys will call me and say, "Yo, bro, I'm dating this thing yeah She makes mad pee. She's hand. She's strong. She can protect me and my family. And like, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Like, she can hold it down for me and my kids later on down the line. We look at different things as compared to women, yeah. and that's that's what I want to sort of like wrap my head around. And yeah, but I think it's because that's traditionally mm. the roles have already been assigned from years ago yeah. the man has always been seen to mm. be the breadwinner and the woman's meant mm. to be like the homemaker the person that has things in yeah. order at home so i don't think it would make sense to then be discussing 
her salaries or so so are you are you happy with this traditional structure then like as a woman i feel like things are changing now no but are you happy with it though um like what do you what would you expect from your man like do you know what i mean i i i'm i sort of still hold the pr- traditional view like I would that the obviously, man is the head of the household. yeah, yeah. Mm. He will always be the head of the households. Mm. I would like to have a man that has, mm. you know, good head on his shoulders, so he'll be able to leave me, lead yeah. me down the right path. Yeah. Um, I am very happy, you mm. know, doing things at home. But personally, I'm mm. a very like, I'm a very work orientated person, so yeah. I can't be in the house twenty four seven. Like mm. I respect housewives and women mm. that just stay predominantly at home mm. all the time but that's not necessarily me but at the mm. same time i definitely respect those yeah the those choose, the choose that but definitely. i feel like now society's moving towards a movement where women and men they're equally they're on the same path yeah. now like mm-hmm. there's never been a time than there is now where we're seeing women out earn mm. their men mm-hmm. and i don't know what it feels like for you mm. guys but it's quite common now oh so, yeah 100 yeah, yeah. Especially, especially at a younger age i think before we hit like our 40s women are out earning us and obviously there's various factors to that but after that it kind of changes and it deviates based on whether the woman wants to then settle down and have kids and stuff like that and those yeah. are other things that society we need to look into yeah. as to how to best um go ahead with that yeah but yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's a it must be a weird one for men like it's a, it's a weird one do you know what i mean because what is it weird to be with a high earner or um, it, it depends. It depends what type of dude you are in the first place. Yeah, it depends. It depends on like your your ego level, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, it does. Yeah, and obviously a lot of it is like how we've been conditioned to to believe like our roles are. Do you know what I mean? As men, we we ideally want to be protectors. We ideally want to be providers. Yeah. But the way the system works now is that we that's not how the the work environment works. That's not how society works. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? A woman can go into the office and earn as much as you, if not more. So yeah. it varies. But yeah, I just wanted to put my little statistic out there and my little findings that I found this morning okay. before I introduce you. So tell, tell me, tell the people. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like a little warm-up speech. Yeah? No, no, it was good. <laughs> it was good. But yeah, tell us who you are and what is it that you do. Hi, people. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm Tolu Bakray. Yeah. Um, I'm a journalist. Mm-hmm. I'm an Sick. editorial assistant mm-hmm. at an advertising agency. Yeah. And I'm just an all-round creative, kind of talkative mm-hmm. person. You might see a little bit of my writings on the Metro and my blog. Yeah, we're going to discuss that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Southwest Londoner um, mm. and various other things mm. in the near future. Um, and yeah, yeah, 25. Nice. You know. And you're also my unofficial road trip partner. <laughs> like, we're supposed to be road trip you partners, are. but we're taking one road trip together. One, <laughs> just one. You, just one, and <laughs> just we've one. been road trip partners ever since. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> Where did we go? We went Ber- Bagel King, and then we drove across <laughs> the whole of Essex. No, but I told you yeah. that my, you know coming to my area would be quicker. But you went yeah. the whole we way. We went around. the whole way around. But it was yeah. interesting. It we was had good. a good conversation. No, definitely. And I guess that's why we're here. So. Most definitely. Yeah. And um, one of the other reasons why we're here as well is that you recently wrote a quite an interesting article and it was funny because before we go into the article when i was reading it, it kind of felt very heartfelt and deeply personal Aww. like it, it, it hit you it's one of those articles that really hit you did it hit you it hit me but i didn't really care too tough yeah do you know what i mean like n- not that i didn't care about your experience yeah. but in terms of my own personal experience like yeah. i was able to deal with it and i'm able to deal with it now just just because the type of person i am i'm yeah. able to shut things off and not allow it to affect me emotionally but then i can see how it can affect someone else and particularly a, a, a woman of color as well so yeah. um what's the title of your the article that we, we're talking about again do you remember the title stop Asking me when I'll get married. Stop asking me when I'll get married. Can you tell us a bit about the article and what brought it about? So um, it, was in the, it was in the metro, right? It was in yeah. the metro. Mm-hmm. Um, got over like 35,000 impressions Sick. on Twitter alone. Um, it prompted a lot of conversations. Like when mm. I was going out, people were like, oh my God, Tolu, like mm. you wrote that article. It brought yeah. like unwarranted, warranted <laughs> conversations. But I was open yeah. to all of them. I mean, they were very interesting point <laughs> of views. Were dudes like, oh, do you want to put an end to that question right now? Were yeah, they, were people were like, based on it? yeah, people were even like to me after, oh, so do you think you're going to get married after, yeah. after that article? I was like, yeah. you're so cheeky. But um, <laughs> what was the article about? The article mm. was literally what the title said. Mm. Stop asking me that. Mm. Like, I feel like, I'm going to speak on behalf of, you know, African women, mm-hmm. but 
we've been so pressured mm. to find a spouse, to get our homes together, mm. to put aside our career, to put aside what we really want. And obviously not saying that everyone doesn't want a family mm. or vice versa, but um, a lot of the time, a lot of people have always mm. conditioned, how can I say this? Before you, who who are these people? Who are we talking about? Uh, do you know what? It, it's really because just... that title is very familiar. If you're if you're of African descent, yeah, that title is extremely familiar. I'm sure loads of people have heard it. Like I've got aunties in church that are that I could say that to any day because they they forever like asking when you're getting married yeah. and so forth. So it's it's aunties, it's parents, mm. it's it's sometimes even your married friends, your mm. friends in relationships, like legit, just stop. Mm. It it was kind of like a letter to all the people that continuously put mm. pressure on women to marry, to have children, to settle down, to have mm. a family. Yeah. And it's just like, don't you understand that mm. this current time that we live in, people are doing diverse or different things with their lives. Like, yeah. I feel like people need to just kind of respect everyone's individual journey mm-hmm. and just sort of embrace the other aspects of their lives yeah. other than always bringing up the conversation. When will you marry? When will you marry? <laughs> like, where's your boyfriend? Uh-uh. Yeah, like, yeah. Kilo de, like, Kilo yeah. de to new or call. Like, it's like, you know, yeah. like, just, just mm. relax. Mm. When last have you asked me, how's work going? Have I moved up? Mm. Do I have plans of working yeah. in like a senior position or yeah. you know how or just your general well being yeah like, like, like how's your mental health how's your like mental how's health, everything yeah. like how's mm-hmm. church going nothing like that like yeah. it's it's just the same thing and women have been getting this for years like I can't even imagine how females older than me must feel having that because mm. I'm speaking at a time where like I'm in my mid 20s so yeah. it's there like it's been there for a while but mm-hmm. it's not there yet to the yeah. point where I, I've lost my mind. Yeah. I mean, I, I recently, I was listening to a podcast and this girl made an entire podcast based on when wow. will you marry? And it was, it was, it was different. Like yeah. her whole, her whole perspective was, it was different. She was in her, her early thirties or she mm. is in her early thirties. And it was just weird hearing her experience. It seemed like mm. people were very, very, very concerned, but Seriously. listening to her As if podcast, there was something wrong with her. Hundred yeah. percent. But listening to her podcast and seeing what she does, she looks like she's in a very, very good place. Mm. So it was just like I can only imagine like what older people mm. kind of go through and the pressures they kind of face. So yeah. I thought it would be smart of me to write this on behalf of mm. African women. Obviously, I can't so speak. It's, a, it's an open letter to the aunties, basically. Yeah, basically. Now, now break down the article a bit because you, you talked a lot about how it made you feel as a as a person and in terms of your personal worth and stuff like that and being tied to you being married. Um, do you, do you <laughs> it at, at times, yeah, it didn't yeah. make me feel like I was complete mm-hmm. when it used to get to me. Obviously, at the time that I wrote the article, um, it was prompted by one of my aunties, then oh, okay. bringing up the whole mm-hmm. um subject again. So I thought, mm-hmm. you know what, no, nah, people need to discuss mm-hmm. this. Like, what is now. going on? Yeah. yeah, obviously, you see it on Twitter, you see it on the timeline, but I just thought. You know, we need it out there. So it was prompted by that conversation. But prior to that, I think I always kind of had people in Mm. my ear. And sometimes it wasn't necessarily the aunties. It was sometimes females in relationships and that were married. Well, like the married ones. Yeah, that were just like, when are you getting married? And Mm. sometimes... it it didn't always feel like it was necessarily from a good place. Mm. Like there were other things going that you necessarily Was it trying to like rub it in your face in a sense? Do you feel like it's it's a case of that as well? Yeah. I don't don't know people's intentions. I don't know people's intentions. Mm -hmm. I can only speak by what Because I know in the community it's it's seen as like a massive achievement. So with any achievements you want the world to know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you want to ask the other individual why they haven't been able to achieve that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I bought a house. Like, where is your house? Yeah, no, 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 no. You you uh, don't do people like that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's belittling. Mm. You just need to chill and ask, you know, like just provide words of comfort every once in a while. But... Mm. That's no, that's literally deep. what yeah. I get. I mean, I, I felt the article because everything, every piece of it felt very personal to 
the, whoever wrote the article, which was yourself, yeah. and, and I could feel the pain and the reasoning behind it. And being from an African household as well, like I know how like my other female Africans feel about this. Do you know what I mean? Because it's always the constant topic of discussion everywhere you go. Yeah. Every time there's an event, that's the first, that's the debate that, that everyone has about marriage and what's going on between mm. the relationship between men and women and yeah. what's currently happening in our society and yeah. why are young people not getting married as young yeah. as they used to back home and so forth. So, and, and I get it as well. I have like one or two aunties that are constantly asking, oh, when can I bring my hat? And I'm thinking in my head, you're possibly not even invited. <laughs> <when the time laughs> I'm <comes>. not invited. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was even going to say, <laughs> like, don't you ever just ask your aunties that, auntie, like, uh, what happened between mm. you and Uncle Lamre? Like, yeah. what's your situation? What you had is the reason why I'm still single <laughs> and I'm still trying to piece together my life. Because mm. I think I wrote in the article that I don't want it to become a thing where I, I get with someone mm. just because of the pressure and mm. it doesn't work. And then mm. I'm... And, I end off being worse than I was when I was single. I mean, yeah. what, what so is the So if you're going to do it, it's going to be a one-off that? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah of, mm. of course. I think that's what mm. the general aim is for 100%. everybody. But, yeah. But, I mean, it's, taking a couple of steps back, what is, like, the dating scene for you now, and specifically for a young black lady? The dating scene? <laughs> yeah. um, for me, partic- for me in particular, I'm not dating. I've taken the active okay. choice to remove myself from it just because there's Mm -hmm. other aspects of my life that I want to focus on um um yeah so I don't there's not much to talk about dating just because I'm not part of it you you purposely took yourself out of it 100% like don't get me wrong I meet people Mm -hmm. and people are like oh like I'd love to get to know you further and I'm like you can but I'm not exactly dating Mm. right now so most people when they hear that they're kind of they don't really yeah, but you do you Go do on. want to get married, right? Of course I do. Yeah, yeah, so wanting to get married doesn't that involve getting to know people and trying to figure out? Of course it does. Yeah. But as of this moment, maybe mm-hmm. next year I'll join you mm-hmm. within the whole dating scene. But yeah. right now, like that's just not what I'm yeah. really on. Like. But how was it like when you was dating though? Um, dating dating was fun. Like. Mm. I sort of, I'm like a really friendly person. I don't go mm. into anything with the intentions of, oh, we're going to mm. get married. I, I think I'm almost too friendly, actually. Like, okay. I'd, as a guy, I treat yourself. you like a girl. <laughs> that's, that's how I always yeah. did. And I just felt like, oh, mm. maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I, mm. I thought, you know what, let me take myself out of this mm. in order to probably work on myself and why I keep talking to guys as girls and yeah yeah but but what w- what was the relationship like with the guys though like how was you finding the whole process like of getting to know someone um like did you enjoy the dating scene like is there something that you have like like fond experience like memories of and stuff yeah and, yeah, yeah. They- they were they were quite good, you know. You go to your your restaurant, you do your little bowling. Obviously, I won. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm a, you let you really I'm a good to bowler. Cute, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, they were they were fun getting to know different people. I think I personally feel like people should treat dating as an experiment. Mm. Just don't go there with the intentions of this has to work yeah, or this the, must yeah. be the one mm-hmm. go into it and look at people and see what you like about that person. Mm. And if it doesn't necessarily work, move on, take what you like from that person mm-hmm. and then find what it is that you like about that person in someone else. So if mm. that person doesn't tick all your boxes, just grace of well, women have a lot of boxes I, though, so it's gonna be near enough difficult for someone to tick all your boxes. Yeah, I mean we do, but I think yeah. as you get older, the most important ones mm. will will stand out than mm. the boxes that yeah. we had when we were young. So yeah. it all depends. But when I was dating, it, it was fun. Like, yeah. obviously, dating doesn't mean sleeping around. Dating just yeah. means getting to know people 100%. and seeing if you're compatible. Yeah. And just opening yourself up to, for communication and just getting to know people. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So what have you learned from the dating scene, though? What would you say is some of the lessons that you've taken out that you're going <laughs> to improve on next time you eventually do get into the scene? Like? Um, I think maybe I'll, I'll wait a little bit I don't yeah. it, it sounds so negative but mm. maybe just preserve my my childlike self mm-hmm. and just just wait a couple mm. 
months to like maybe mm. open up to people. I'm I'm like an open book, so yeah. and I'm an open book, so I'm able to really share like experiences or what I've gone through pretty early because I'm not. Do you really think that works against you though? Is that is that why you're saying you need to preserve that? No, it do, it doesn't work against me. But sometimes when you find that you you have too many temporary people. Mm there's people that aren't necessarily there for the long run or they don't necessarily show their intentions quite early on. Mm. It becomes hard yeah. to to distinguish who you should open up to and who mm. you shouldn't. But at the same time, you would think that when you're dating, I thought that when people date, mm. like you're meant to be, you know, honest about who you are from the jump. So you'll know if you're compatible. Yeah, that's, but that's people impossible. come with the perso- <laughs> people yeah. come with like a, a fake persona. You mm-hmm. come you don't even come as you are. Mm. Like sometimes I, I blame the men also because mm. you guys sometimes take girls that aren't necessarily used to your type of lifestyle or your mm. living. Then they have to dress up to conform to what you've brought them. Yeah. So now you've just brought a girl out that's pretending to be the person that yeah. you've painted her out yeah. to be. It, it, it works vice versa though. It's, it's, it's a strange one because everyone has and now because of social media as well going back to social media everyone has a persona yeah so if you don't know me and all you all you've seen of me is my social media persona you're gonna have a perception and then you're gonna adapt yourself based on that perception so eventually when we do meet in person yeah you you, you've got this thing built up in your head that you're gonna have to let's say if i'm always wearing suits on my social media three piece (laughs) three piece suit tie and suit every day on social media, when you see me, you're going to assume that you're going to have to come all nicely dressed up. You're going to have to act prim and when proper that's not the girl. and speak the Queen's English. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But when you get to know me, you're like, wait, he's a bit dyslexic. He just tracks ah, anyhow. He, he, mum- he mumbles a bit. <laughs> he likes wearing tracksuits. Yeah, and yeah. then you're hella confused because we all created these online personas that we struggle to keep up with. Yeah. So it works both ways because when you're watching, when you're, when you're online and you're looking at girls, sometimes as a dude as well, it's a bit scary and it's off-putting mm. because you're like, whoa, okay, She's looking 10, 10, 24, 7 online. Yeah. Like, am I going to be able to maintain this? Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? And dudes, we have to think about maintaining it, not just on a physical level, but on yeah. a financial level. Yeah. Because if you're constantly eating in nice restaurants online, I'm thinking, wait, hold on a moment. Yeah. This girl here is always eating in restaurants where you're paying minimum 200 pound yeah. a meal. Yeah. Like, I've got 75 pound in my account. If I take her out, yeah, we're drinking water and then I'm yeah. making an excuse for us to kick out of here. Mm-hmm. So all of these personas that we're creating of ourselves online, is having a detrimental effect on us psychologically and 100%. physically when we do end up having real life experiences with yeah. people so it's do something that we should all like, look out for do you feel like when people date their both parties are quite honest with each other no definitely not like it it, it depends who you, it depends if you if you know the person prior because then they can't really hide do you know what I mean? But if you don't know the person prior, it's, it's a case of trying to impress. It's, it's all about m- mating value. So it's like, I'm trying to show my value to you. You're trying to show your value to me. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? So at the end of the day, you're going to come with your best face forward. And so am I. Until yeah. we gradually like break that down. And then we decide whether we want what's, what's underneath all the shells and all, all the cover. Yeah. And that's the scary part. So whenever, whenever I, I, I meet a girl or whatever, I know that the initial meet is always going to be strange. And that's why I never really do, I, I never do proper first dates as in like sit in a high-end restaurant and wearing like ridiculous outfits to impress each other. Because I don't feel like you're ever really going to get the realness out of the person. 100%. Do you know what I mean? So going to a more like comfortable and laid back environment where you can actually talk and have real dialogue and get to know mm. the person so is safe a bit. What has been your best date and why then? Ooh. What's been my best date? Damn, that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was know. probably like a park. Okay. Yeah, just went to chill in the park. That's nice. So bought some snacks, drinks, and went to a park to chill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There was no pretense there, yeah. and like you couldn't hide from just being you. And that's what people need. Do you know what I mean? Because it was but- a hot day as well. I turned up in shorts, and straight away she knew that I had skinny calves. So <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's my that's my biggest vulnerability out there in yeah. the open. So yeah. I can't hide from that. Yeah. I didn't have to get dressed up. Neither did she. She put on a bit of makeup or okay. whatever, and a nice little whatever those you know those summer dresses and yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, you know the maxis. <laughs> yeah maxis. And that was that. Do you okay. know what I mean? There was no pretense. There was no me having to force myself to eat properly with a knife and fork because it was a bunch of snacks and a drink. Yeah. So Which you can actually work on if you're single. You yeah, know, 100%. Like, which is why mm. being single is a good thing. Yeah. Because yeah. that gives you time to brush up on stuff that you don't know 100%. how to do. I mean, 100%. you're taking girls that have no etiquette 
yeah. to high-end restaurants and then when you're all shaking the table <laughs> you're like i didn't know she was like this like yeah. this is how she appeared so yeah. i don't like high-end restaurants because i prefer to hold my fork on my right hand okay do you know what i mean when yeah. i hold my fork on my left hand i look hella spastic <laughs> so the, it's well, spastic hand, be a pretty incorrect term but the yeah. thing is i hold it on my right hand but then it's like i need to be comfortable around the person enough for them to know that okay this dude eats with the fork on his right hand yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean all of these things are like things that are off-putting to yeah people yeah, whether 100. it be a guy or a girl so mm-hmm. it makes it tricky man like you as a young lady so how do you find yourself when you're going to like a, a date a first date and then the dude's like okay we're going to a really super high-end restaurant what's your initial thoughts i'm like okay go Let's yeah go. you're completely calm with it yeah. but do, do you find that the date is, is is as organic as you would want it to be though i keep like, it trusting my way <laughs> no it's cool man. do you <laughs> <laughs> you know this is the type of stuff i do this is how i have to be locked up but um yeah, yeah. um what was the question? D- no, do man, I do, like it? Yeah, and do you find yourself adapting yourself because of the environment? And this is the first time you're going out with a dude? Nah, do you know why? Because I feel like... I feel like I'm generally very bubbly and my conversation mm. will speak for itself. Yeah. So if I was to make any sort of mistakes, I'm able to sort of own it. Mm. Um, in terms of not being myself at a high-end restaurant, if I'm not myself mm-hmm. around you, then I just know that you're not the person that I'm necessarily meant to be with. And yeah. that's okay. I I yeah. have very few experiences where a high-end restaurant will rattle me. It, <laughs> of, it often doesn't. Like, yeah. if yeah. anything, like, I just know I have to dress up. Like, yeah. where but that's you being comfortable with yourself and not, pandering to another another person another individual nah. but not everyone is like that though yeah yeah you know what yeah I mean? and we're creating these weird environments where like we we because I, I was reading a stat actually funny enough and um it was about like um, always reading stats i'm always reading stats <laughs> like i just love That's reading weird stuff it's official weird. national uh, statistics anything statistics i'm there yeah. <laughs> so th- this one was about like um divorces and okay um and in the future, what's going to be like the biggest reason for divorces? And wow. it, I think I've mentioned him on a previous podcast. It was actually to my boy who was about to get married. It, it was that um, one of the biggest reasons going forward is going to be um, dissatisfaction. Wow. And it's mainly due to like what we are compa- us comparing our relationships to people on social media, friends and family that we know. And it's mad because comparison is crazy because you're seeing mm. the best bits of people's lifestyles you're mm. not actually seeing the day-to-day grind yeah do you know what i mean you're seeing them smiling and doing a boomerang on the shard but <laughs> you're, you're, you're not seeing them fighting over the rice and stew at home like yeah, you get it course, and it, it's mad course. that people are actually breaking up and divorcing because they're dissatisfied in comparison to other people's relationships yeah do you know what i mean do, do, do you find the influences on social media having an impact on your personal dating scene um Well, you're not on a lot of social medias at the moment, as we discussed discussing earlier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. But yeah. the very few I do see, um, I think one thing I can take from it is probably that I've got a lot more restaurants to go to. Mm. That's one thing. For it to rattle me in a sense, I don't know if I not can relate. Hard. No. Yeah. I, you know what? I generally look at relationships, yeah, and I'm just like, oh, beautiful. Like, but when it breaks down, mm. it's almost like it's sad. So, social yeah. media has sort of <laughs> made me invest in a mm. relationship, and I guess that's the negative effect that I can We're take. We're investing from, in other people's relationships. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I, yeah. I don't necessarily envy, it, but I, I love it so much to the point where maybe I want to recreate. Mm. that a moment that they've done or maybe i want to take a picture like they have or experience mm. that country or yeah or restaurant like doing they that holding did. a hand taking picture from the back yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah or but god forbid yeah. it breaks down i'm like yeah and now you owe it to everyone i was like i'm yeah. like why mm. it, it almost feels like i was rooting for you it feels like i'm their cousin mm. and i'm like no, like we could have worked it out. I yeah. think that's the negative yeah. impact it leaves with me. Yeah. But I can understand how it may be detriment like it has a detrimental effect to other mm. other girls like myself or other people yeah. that are on social media quite a lot. Yeah. Which is why it's healthy to take 
time <laughs> and time. You've been off for a while. <laughs> no, but it's just yeah. on that. It's good platform. though. No, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's made you a healthier person being off of it because it depends what you're using it for as well. Yeah, yeah. If you're this day just to pre other people's lifestyles, then well, that's, your mind is going to be all over the place. That's not me. And when I look at social media, like I, I can wake up in the morning and I'll turn on my Snapchat or whatever. I'll go into like people's stories. And it's like, this is weird world where like everyone is battling each other. Like, yeah. Like guys are sending shots at girls. Girls are sending <laughs> shots at guys. Who do you follow? <laughs> no, it's like, I don't even know who I'm following to be honest. I need to start, I need to start vetting my, my, my social media because yeah. whenever I go, well, not from you, you, you don't put up stuff like that, but. Wait. Oh, okay. You're good. Okay. No, no, I, I was going to say, no, no, you're good. You're yeah. actually really good. I spread the good news. You spread, the you spread love. You spread the, the news. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because when you go on there, you see like, like you see the men are trash crowd you see the women are trash crowd and it's like everyone is like partaking in this weird like uh, um weird war like w- weird war between men and women that doesn't necessarily exist but we're making it worse by constantly perpetuating it we're like duh, 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 you guys are this time. you girls are this do you know what yeah. i mean and it's not healthy yeah. for anyone because it's, it's not creating healthy relationship for anyone and you're not going to change someone by constantly bat- battering them yeah do you know what i mean all. i don't think women have thought out the men are trash movement. Like, do you know what I mean? No, but you're really addressing this as a movement. Do you think it's some sort of... Do you know, us women, it, sometimes, we are just having a bit it, of a laugh. You know, every now and again, I'm like, men are trash, but no, I'm not I, I say all, like we, I say it, like, I've used the word before in, yeah. in banter and lightheartedness, but you got to remember, everything that you repeat as a human being that goes into your subconscious, you start building up on it. 100%. And we forget that it's, it has an impact on us whether we believe so or not. And it has an impact on other people who are consuming that sort of information. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very careful what I put out on social media. Like, I'm very careful. I can put out absolutely anything. Whether it's banter or not, even though I put it out, it's strategically thought out because yeah. it's going to have an effect on other people. Yeah. It could be younger people watching my social media. Yeah. So there could be young girls out there that are constantly seeing this thing. They're thinking, oh, what, what's this all about? Mm-hmm. Then something will snap in their head and they'll genuinely start believing it then we're creating this divide amongst us and it's not healthy for anyone it's not healthy for women and their relationship with men it's not healthy for men and their relationship with women either yeah. so i constantly perpetuating that whether we think it's banter or not it's mm-hmm. not healthy do you know what i mean and the 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 whole concept behind the ideology is false anyway of so course. it's like it's dangerous and it's weird for me to see that do you know what i mean and we're thinking that we're doing something right yeah, yeah. instead of having the conversation with the and dealing with it head on mm-hmm. we're battering each other over the head like yeah. women are battering men men are battering women mm-hmm. and assuming that we're gonna come out brighter in the other end but it doesn't let's continue this give it another 10 years we're gonna see what happens we're gonna you know see I mean? it's we'll gonna see. be a greater divide because yeah. that's what identity politics does it yeah. divides and conquers and i feel like dividing the- ourselves there's gonna be a um i think they said there's gonna be a new disorder that they're discovering that mm. social media has some sort of effect on our mental health oh 100 i don't, I don't, I don't know if the name is out but they yeah. said that it's coming yeah. and i i feel like it's deeply true no 100 because it's still early days like yeah, we're yeah. still very early in terms of like social media so in terms of the long-term effect we're only gonna see that very, like in a couple of years time do you know what I mean there's already people that are taking their life based on what's been told to them on social media which is so horrendous sad. do you know what I mean so we don't realise the impact of things that we say sometimes yeah yeah definitely and we just assume that oh it's just light hearted banter or it's a bit of bitterness you're going to drop something out there in the universe and it's yeah. going to be completely cool but it's not do you know what I mean and it's, yeah. it's, it's having an effect on us but um, yeah, going back to the, the marriage thing again what is what is marriage to you like what would you do you know what yeah, yeah. I feel like I was telling my friend mm-hmm. the other day, I was telling her that <laughs> a lot of people say they want to marry, but yeah. do they really know why? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like a lot of us say that, you know, we want to build with someone, we want to have yeah. a family, we mm-hmm. want to grow together, multiply, do what the Bible says, mm-hmm. which is the point I also hold. 100% but likewise, yeah. Apart from that, you do know you can do that without marriage. Mm-hmm. So in essence, why does every individual want to be mm. married? And I think, again, it does boil down to yeah. the status quo and the fact that, you know, in some situations, just going to places and saying that you're married, it's mm. sort of respected, which I think maybe that's why some people want to get married. Um, obviously, to me, being married is getting with someone and building with Mm. a person, building a life with the person Mm. you love. That's as much as I've gathered Mm. with 
marriage. Um, I think it is just becoming one to fulfill your God ordained purpose, your yeah. God's given assignment here on earth. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to yoke with someone that has the same beliefs, that has the same morals and values as you. Mm -hmm. um, that's what marriage is for me. That's yeah. what I feel like marriage is now. Yeah. No, I'm sure there's a deeper, deeper me meaning, yeah. but it's good to be equally yoked with someone mm -hmm. that has the same vision, mm -hmm. that sees your purpose, sees what mm -hmm. you're about and wants to achieve that with you. Yeah, Bring both goals together, align together and mm -hmm. grow together. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's great because it has... Uh, with everything there's pros and cons to it yeah like with absolutely everything in this world there's pros and cons um to me as as a man personally to me marriage is like i think it's probably like the deepest spiritual and and social responsibility you can possibly have yeah do you know what i mean it, it puts you in a place of deep responsibility and also passing on your legacy your seeds and, yeah 100. and having having that responsibility of looking after a family and and children and so forth but um there, there's Nowadays, there's also the cons of like the high divorce rates and the 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 financial implications of getting married, which yeah. a lot of people tend to brush away. And when it coming back to your article again, sometimes like the parents are like imposing marriage on their children yeah. without offering any financial support as to yeah. how they're going to achieve this. Because I was on my parents' radio station. Um, whoop, whoop. Of, whoop, whoop, big shout <laughs> big out. Big up them. Big up them. They do marriage counselling on... His hot, parents are doing hot, bits, by the way. They're about, they're about. Yeah, they um, are. So I was on the radio station and they wanted me to tell them, like we were having a discussion as to why young people are not getting married. Yeah. And um, how we're dealing with the pressures from family and so forth and I was like look what you guys forget to um, discuss when you're talking about marriages and stuff like what you guys forget to mention is that nowadays it costs a lot to get married mm. like there's a lot that's involved in it and maybe it's down to also us wanting more than we should have because ideally it shouldn't really be that expensive but yeah. it's just the way that the market is now and yeah. it's the way that things are moving so everyone yeah. wants their ideal marriage they want to feel a certain type of way on mm -hmm. the day so i'm like look if you like if you guys were adding on top of the pressure you're adding a little cheeky check on the side yeah of course, of course. <laughs> the more your kids will be getting married yeah you know what i mean and also if you guys were showing us the true example of what marriage is in the home then we can take you serious yeah do you see what i mean because if if you grow up in a household where the marriage was completely trash it was broken down there was infidelity there was all sorts and now your then, idea of marriage is going to be non-existent but the you know same I mean? people that are pressuring us to mm. get married are the same people mm. with bad examples yeah. like you've raised not to be disrespectful but mm. you've sort of raised i know it wasn't their fault mm. like that one party obviously two yeah. two it takes two to tangle but you've raised a broken home or mm -hmm. your your home is mm. not necessarily together. There isn't a man in yeah. the picture. And it's like, you're forcing something on us that hasn't quite worked out for you. So why don't mm. you at least try to hear women out and mm. allow us to take our time so that we can correct the mistakes that you've made, essentially. Yeah. Like, And I feel like that's what aunties aren't getting at. Mm. But at the same time, I feel like they live we can't really blame them. They live mm. in a time where that was all they knew. Yeah. You see yeah. all this juggling side businesses. Mm -hmm. They weren't about it. Mm. Husbands was were all they knew. Like mm. Well, they had struggles, but their struggles were a bit different. But they, they definitely had their own struggles as well. Though. Yeah, they had struggles. That, yeah, One of them were, was um, obviously being with someone or having a child out mm. of wedlock, which mm. is what a lot of them tried mm. to prevent. About this no, I completely get it. But what I think also as well is looking at it from their point of view is that yeah. they've seen something in the union that they probably want us to enjoy as well. Yeah. So like when you, some of the aunties that I, I speak to, like some of them do have great unions yeah. and they, they see their children growing up and flourishing and they want that to continue. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So they, they've, they've seen the good in marriage as well. They've seen how it helps in terms of like economically at home, having yeah. two parents there, how it helps with the protection and the upbringing of children and just how it helps in general. And I, and I think also statistics prove that people that are in happy marriages are ultimately the happiest people around. 
you know what I mean? Like, mm. And statistically, men tend to do better financially when they're in good marriages. Oh, so you read up like, on this as well. I read on a couple of stats, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sometimes yeah. I only read stats to benefit me. I, yeah. Sometimes I read other stats because obviously I'm not married yet. I'm yeah. not probably going to get married anytime soon. But like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it does have its pros to mm. it as well as the cons. So mm-hmm. maybe they've witnessed some of that and they want, they want it badly for their kids or their nieces and their nephews and so forth so are, are you saying the happy couples want it for their children I, i'm saying that sometimes the aunties that are saying these whether they've had bad marriages or breakups or whatever they've seen the good in it that they want us to experience as well i don't think so so you think you think most of them are coming from just a place of what though just get married <laughs> for the sake just of it. Just have a man <laughs> yeah. I, honestly yeah. i don't think they really see the benefits i mean mm. Some married couples, I mean, they're happy. Like, you, you mm. can be happy by yourself. But mm. I'm telling you, they just want you to get married so that mm. they can tell their friends that, look, my mm. child is married. My child has a man. My child's moved out. Is my it, child's... I've got a grandchild now. Is that I cultural think, currency in the African community, you reckon? Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Of course it is. I agree with that. I definitely do. Yeah. Like, I agree with that. I think probably my parents are waiting. That's the only currency that they're waiting to gather in their purse. Yeah. Like, I think they're happy with me, with everything, apart from that segment. And I yeah. think they're just waiting to say yeah. that. Okay, they, he's they, completed a puzzle now. Like, he's married with kids. Yeah, they yeah. just want something to celebrate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know Nigerians. Nigerians, mm. any, any excuse to have a whole party, they'll mm. do it. A wedding. Mm. Do you know how much... Yeah. How much weight that holds. Yeah. They, they're they going to invite, like, obviously, if you were in Nigeria mm. and you got married, like, there's no such thing as a small wedding. That yeah. whole town that you live in, they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> they will come. And for them oh. to know that, oh, yeah, the Bakre family yeah, or one yeah, of yeah. the Arab children are getting married, yeah. that people will go insane. Like, mm. it is definitely, su- it's, a, it's a status thing. Yeah. It's, it's just for respect and just to... Mm. But I'm not going to say that's the primary reason. Mm-hmm. I know there's other reasons, but to me, that's obviously the main thing. Yeah. And obviously they've grown up, like I said, they've grown up in a time where that's all they had. Mm. Remember, like women were just known to be homemakers. Mm. They weren't really known to work. So the best trophy that they could hold on to mm. after probably graduating and that was essentially marriage yeah. and then kids. The, yeah, so the you can kind of see why their beliefs are set up the way that it is. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's very tricky. Um, I was going to ask you a question, but then the question just passed my mind as you were talking. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you one. Go and hit me. I wanted to know, like, what does marriage mean for you then? Um, and do, do you see yourself... I remember you said you don't see yourself getting married now. But from what I've seen... Yeah. You, you, said, to, you said to me You look earlier, like you are you in a place earlier? where you could get married <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, I definitely want to get married. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, as a Christian, it's, it's one of the unions that's very important in, in terms of like Christianity, upholding the family and continuing your, your lineage. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to pass on my legacy. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to pass on my genes. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to have a loving and healthy family. Yeah. But then I also think the decision making is also very important. So jumping into it just for the sake of it or on other people's clock can get you into big trouble. Because mm. if I decide to step out there now and just grab the next lady I see and get married to her, like just because I'm being pressured to do so, I can put myself in trouble for the next couple of years being unhappy in the situation. The lady might be great or wonderful, but if I'm not completely happy with that person, if that's not the person I really and truly want to be with, if, yeah. if it's not a right fit for who I am as a person and what I'm trying to build, it doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with the individual, mm-hmm. but it just means that the person might not fit what I want. And you're, yeah. you're, you're allowed to make that choice as a human being. Yeah, I course. think sometimes that's the, the, the mistake that we make. We feel like we're not allowed to have choice or we're not allowed to pick things that suit the the suit our situation and suit yeah. our dreams and visions or whatever so to me i can't get married until it makes sense do you know what i mean i wouldn't just get married because of an age restriction or a time limit that's set on it like I have so to... when you say it makes sense mm. 
what has to make sense? Does your soul have to click? Do you... Not, not even a soul. Do you have me. to dream? Do you have to get a message? Or no, what? I think the person just has to be right for me, right for who I am as an individual and right okay. for what I'm trying to achieve in life and what I'm trying to become in life and yeah. where my dreams and aspirations are looking to take me. Because not everyone wants to go along with the ride that you're on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't force it. And there's only so long people can pretend to want to be on the same um, ride that you're on. But okay. eventually it's going to come out. As, oh, like, yeah. They wanted yeah. to go, you can't they wanted to, go to a long. different direction. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it happens because sometimes you're talking to someone, you're telling them about who you are and what you're about. And they get really excited about it, thinking that that's what they want. But then they come to the realization that maybe that's not what they want. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you can't take that to heart as in like you've done something wrong as a person. Like whether you're a female or guy, if someone decides that they can't be with you because it's not right, yeah. it's not you. Some, uh, most of the time I'm not dropping one of those it's you it's not you it's me type of thing <laughs> it's, not but it's not you it's me but it's sometimes it's the, suit, the suit is just not right yeah. do you know what I mean and if it's not the right fit then you just have to keep it moving do you think um, what you do at this present in time mm. also has a factor as to why you're 100%. not necessarily married 100%. because I, I follow this girl on um, Twitter and she brings up interesting points. And she mm. says that men only get married to people that, how can I say it, that are convenient for that time, not necessarily who they love. Conven Does that make sense? So what, married or do they date the person that's convenient at a particular time in they their lifetime? They actually lifetime? marry. And the Some thing is, do. she did a poll mm. and it showed that more people married out of convenience convenience yeah, than love yeah. and to me that was disappointing it's scary as well because it, it's gonna it's gonna end up leading to infidelity and other stuff because if you're not happy at home with the person who's supposed to be there for the next what 40 50 years yeah how are you gonna function as a human being mm. like that's torture do you know what i mean you yeah. might as well put yourself in a room with your worst enemy because you're not really truly happy with the person mm. you just got married for convenience and then you're gonna look for the you're gonna look for someone who you truly have those feelings for out outside yeah, of the relationship def definitely so it's not healthy but it happens so but marrying out of convenience surely mm. that just means marrying when you think you've got yourself together yeah some people do that yeah so essentially that means the woman that fits right with yeah. and comes at that time and yep and it's half decent <laughs> you, you pluck so then up. that isn't love but, then no it's not but then what is love though do you know what i mean oh, is, that's uh, another topic like <laughs> if we just married based on our emotions then that alone is crazy as well Oh, of course of so course. there's so there's various factors to it do you know what yeah. i mean there has to be like it, it but love back. must be on a high oh, yeah, pedestal as well yeah. And Equally as respect and every other factor. Yeah. But once you find all those factors, then it comes down to you as an individual wanting to be committed to that person, which yeah. I think is probably the, the most important factor in it. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be committed to the situation. Definitely. Like we could like everything about each other, but if I'm not committed to you and I don't make that decision to be committed to you as a man, yeah. there's no way it's going to work. Yeah. Because regardless of you ticking all the boxes that I have, if I'm not committed to this situation, how is it going to work? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that commitment requires a lot of like sacrifices yeah. and understanding and, and and other bits that requires for any relationship to work definitely so it's, it's it's hella hard but me personally as going back to that point like as a as an entrepreneur or business personnel the best time to hone your skills and and to do stuff is post probably when you're single when you're most when you're when you can be selfish with your time yeah do you see what I mean? Because I can I can drag someone into my environment and my space right now yeah but that would mean sacrificing and I need to make that decision if I'm willing to sacrifice or wanting to sacrifice for that person. Mm -hmm. But then there's no point lying to yourself or lying to that person and dragging them into your situation where you're yeah. not willing to do that. Yeah. Like it makes no sense. Of course. So if you're going to maintain single and date or whatever, then and and and, and do what you're doing, then do that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like I can now I can do that as a single man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I can be selfish as an entrepreneur. I can I can I can do focus on my businesses and that'll be my key priority. And if someone does come into my life, I'll let them know that this is my key priority until I'm willing to commit to that person. Mm -hmm. And you don't you never know when that situation <laughs> can happen. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You don't know when that person's gonna turn your head. It's such a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. But there, yeah, there, as you said, um, you, 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 when you came here initially, you were like, look, you're ready. And like <laughs> me mentally and, and, and other bits, like I'm ready. Like yeah. it's not like I'm not ready. Yeah. But I you're feel like. You're waiting for the right woman. Yeah. You're waiting for the right woman. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm enjoying this moment where I'm able to be selfish to do things that I'm doing. Definitely. And that's all Which it is. Which is why I've sort of 
actively taken the choice to stop dating. Because yeah. at times, having to answer to someone continuously mm. is also mm. distracting and also itself is a sacrifice, yeah. having to always mm. update that person with what's going on in your life, what yeah. you're doing and... But then how do you know when you're when you're when you're out of that space now and like, okay, cool, I'm ready to date now? Do you just set a time frame on it and then when the time hits you jump into the scene? Or what is it? Is it like it because the thing is if if you with any goal, if you don't have specifics to it, you're you're constantly gonna be sailing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're never you don't know when you've reached the point you're supposed to reach. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So how do you know like that you're ready to like hit the scene now? I guess, do you know what? Yeah. To be honest, it's a bit like men as well. I, yeah. I feel like I need to be in position where spiritually I'm all together. Mm. Um, in terms of work, I'm all together. Mm. Wholeness, you know, I'm, I'm all together. Mm. Um, Wholeness is a tough one. Though. It, it, is a, it is a tough <laughs> yeah. one. It, it is a tough one. But I feel like I need all of those to be in check, like my mm. money, everything for me to yeah. then sort of date and not feel like I'm a liability to yeah. the guy that I'm dating. Yeah. Um, liability, not necessarily not in you, terms you of finance. Rich rich. Not in terms, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not, not necessarily in terms of finance, but in mm. terms of getting your mind right. Okay. Like sometimes having to deal with someone, you know, that's quite often sad, which is not a bad thing, but if you're not in the space to, to be with them or Mm. if you don't have the right mental capacity to be able to Mm. advise them or to even receive advice Mm -hmm. does that make sense then you wouldn't it's not really right to then Mm. start dating knowing that you yourself you're not currently all the way there Mm. because it would be hard on the person that you're dating I mean you're trying to get to know him your sane self is trying to get to know him Mm. but then at the same time you're also Mm. a bit yeah you have your days where you're not quite there yet yeah i kind of agree and disagree with that because i feel i think if you're if you're with the right person then that could that could potentially um it could quickly escalate those situations for you yeah you can solve them quicker than on your own as they say two heads is better than one Mm -hmm. so maybe perhaps it's the individual who you find that's that could be either the 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 problem or the you know i mean the solution yeah you see what i mean so i could I could potentially be dealing with so many um, various businesses and ideas that are in my head and stuff. But if I find the right helpmate, that could potentially help me. Do you know what I mean? It could potentially help uh, weigh the burden down a bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it could be with a person. Because if you're trying to solve everything yourself before you get into a proper situation, then that could be hella tricky. Like you could be there for a long, long time trying to like solve no. all life's problems. Do you know what I mean? No, I hear you, but, but yeah, I feel you like feel nice. I feel yeah, mm. I feel like I'd be a bit easier with you and more free. Mm. Like I, I've mm. been in a place where I wasn't I was dating, but I wasn't necessarily all together. And I had I found myself lying to yeah. the person sometimes like mm. let's say when I wasn't really secure in a job, like I, mm. I couldn't really tell them, you know, this is what I'm doing because Mm. within me I kind of felt ashamed and I don't want to mm. date knowing that I mm. have to lie I mean I'm a person yeah. that likes to date on the basis of being honest mm. and if that means having to having to lie then mm. I, I quite frankly don't want to date yeah. and there, yeah. there's sometimes in life where you're not quite ready to open up to someone new about stuff that mm you're necessarily going through yeah. especially when it's early days so yeah. i mean it does depend on the individual but at the same time mm. i think it's right to just yeah. be at one and at peace with yourself before you try to join with another person because that in itself becomes another pile yeah. of work 100 it's, percent. it's actually it's actually important you actually said that because the whole point about lying to yourself and not being unable to tell the truth to your partner is something that I'm sure a lot of guys face. Yeah, you and gotta it's remember, so nice. We're, we're known as the, the breadwinners and stuff. So it's, I, I, not that I know dudes, but I know of situations whereby a guy is in, a, um, is in like a dire financial situation and he's left his partner because he can't deal with having a partner and her potentially finding out that he's in that dire situation. You see what I mean? Those are some of the pressures that we How face. How long were they together for, if you don't mind me asking? 
probably like a year and a bit. Oh. So it, it comes back to that funny meme, actually. I know I'm turning a serious situation funny, but <laughs> there's, there's this meme about, oh, um, my my girlfriend found makeup in my bag. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to tell her that I saw Avon, Avon or yeah, I was a representative. Yeah. So, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah. It's it, like that. It's like that. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those type of situations. Do you know what I mean? And these are some of the pressures that we face. And I'm sure... I think when it comes to like the monetary side of things, guys probably feel it more than women of because course they we're known do. as the breadwinners and yeah. we, we want to come into a relationship knowing that we're secure. So it's yeah. tricky and it's hard, it's yeah. difficult. But it's interesting hearing that as a female as well, you feel the same way because I, I don't think I've heard that much. Yeah. I, I mean, I do. I'm, mm. I'm not going to sit here and tell you stuff mm. that I'm going through mm especially stuff that I take pride in when I just met you last week. Like I, I'm really not going to do that yeah. because I don't know what type of heart you have. So yeah. for me to be vulnerable about certain aspects in my life and then it fizzles out mm. knowing that my business is somewhere. I know that's been a bit childish of me, but Hey, mm. that's just the way I look at, look yeah. at things. Yeah. But at the same time, I also hold the view that you have because mm. when you do meet the right person, I think that person can also help you mm. to make things work. Mm. So, so I feel like it, I, I feel like it, mm. it 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 all depends. Yeah. But for me personally, I think it works out when you you don't have to be all the way there, but let the mm -hmm. person know that you're actively making changes in your life yeah. to become a, per a better person, mm -hmm. whether that's in your finance, your education, your job. And then the person can be like, okay, mm. I can work with that. Yeah. Do, do you think we're honest about like what we want when we go into relationships? Like, so, you know, you, every, every woman has a list, right? You've got a list, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got a checklist. There, there's, like, the most desirable list, and then there's, like, it, it trickles down the most important ones based on, like, yeah. whatever it is you're after. Yeah? Like, are you, do, you, do you think when you go into situations, you're completely honest about it initially? So, like, let's say you meet a guy now, and, like, he ticks a couple of boxes, but a few are missing. Like, how do you go about it? Usually, I tend to get to know the person still. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it doesn't always work out in my favor because mm. if I knew, if I know that I like a certain type of guy, mm. and I feel like, um, you know what, I, that type mm. of guy hasn't necessarily worked. Let me go for this one. Yeah. Sometimes it still doesn't work out in my favor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm. I don't always go in mm. being honest. Um, but then again, that's honest of you to say that. Actually, <laughs> you think <laughs> it's very honest of you to say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't mm. always go in being honest, which mm. um, sometimes can work against mm. us. But then again, I think it depends what you're trying to tick off because mm. some of the time, some of the things that I want are like my friend will say, it's just shallow. I'm mm. not, now. Don't ask me what's on my box, yeah. but it is just <laughs> shallow sometimes. <laughs> It's shallow, but I think it's it's a real depiction of what we want internally and biologically. Yeah, if that makes sense. It does because I had this I had this conversation. Now, now I'm in a podcast where I'm forever having conversations. Always, I always. When do girl. you have a conversation? Uh, about it. <laughs> so I was having a conversation with my boy, and yeah. um, he was like, um, "So what, what was what was we just discussing about?" Um, that we're not always honest. We're not always honest, yes. Yeah. And he was like, oh, um, like, why are women like this? Why are women like that? And why do they want so many things? And why is their checklist so long? Yeah. And I was like... Who's even telling him the checklist? What, what girl? What girl's giving out Don't the get to, This is 2019. We know that women want more than what they say they want. Yeah. <laughs> We've experienced a lot, yeah? Yeah. But it's like, I've, I started... Because now that I'm doing a lot of research, I started looking into like other side of things. So like history, biology, and like various ideologies. And I realized that with the female, with, with females, um, they have to be extra careful in terms of what mate they pick. Because when you have a child, like it's a long, it's a long process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's nine months of carrying a child. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And when you're having that child, you want to, you want to ensure that that child is being brought into a good environment that's safe for that child. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to ensure that that child is getting good genetics. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be strong. You know what I mean? Like for guys, we can have 
many children with many women at the same time. Whilst with women, it's a one-off period that completely blocks your life and then it continues again until God knows when. Yeah. So I think the selection process is more rigorous with women than it is with guys. Mm -hmm. So I was telling him, look, would you want a woman to just rock up outside, grab a homeless dude off the street and be like, I can see potential in him. Let me carry his seed for nine months and we're going to try a thing when the seed comes and mm -hmm. try and raise it and that. Yeah. But this inside a woman's brain, there must be so much going on that plays on the, the, um, the, the selection. selection process. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, 100. wait, what's this guy's genetics like? Mm -hmm. How is his health like? Is he going to be able to protect me and my kids? Yeah. Like, there's so many things. And I realized that we have to understand the deeper side of why the selection list is so long. Mm -hmm. and, I can't, and I'm kind of starting to get it a bit more now. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. Know what I mean? It still it, doesn't make all of it all right. It still yeah. doesn't make it right. But you have to understand it for deeper than what it is on face value. Like, oh, he needs to have a car. He needs to have a house. He needs to have this. You, you need to look deeper behind this. Like, why does, do, she, why does want she look that. at these things? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You see what I mean? Like, there's some women that that whole car issue, being mm. able to drive, not being able, it, mm. it doesn't matter to them. Mm. But then there's some women that haven't necessarily grown up in luxury so all mm. of these things on their selection mm. list or their tick box mm. is more important than mm. another girl if that makes sense yeah. so it is i think down to the individual that girl's experience that mm. she's had in life but you can only find this out when you speak to them yeah, and when you yeah. I think it's fine to have like high expectations and stuff, but excessive is when it becomes an issue. Yeah, yeah. And that's definitely. what guys are struggling with. It's excessive. Okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's excessive, you're asking that we go and eat at a high-end restaurant when he's I'm not built like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then you have to, you know what I mean? As they say, cut your cloth according to your size. To your size, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You have to be aware of that. So if you're gonna have to date up, then you're gonna have to date up. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You have to be honest about it yeah. and just go about your business. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I think it's also there's a good filtering system now as well and guys can see it because if I go online and I see a particular type of girl who's like overdoing or living a particular lifestyle that I don't want it's easy for me to filter I'm like no yeah. I'm not on it do you I know what I mean I was just gonna say I'm not on it yeah. maybe she might be cutting she might be selling herself short and losing out on potential opportunities and potential partners that would be great for her which they need to be made aware of but at the same time guys see it and they, they'll cut themselves off I was gonna ask you um, you make um, reference to the point that mm. girls will always want these high-end restaurants. I mean, oh, no, I how, do, how no. do you know that's what they yeah. want? Do they openly come to you and say, listen, I want to no. go to... I mean, with me, it's not a personal or... thing. It's not like, I don't think... I, I'm just making reference to seeing excessive online. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, girls don't come to me asking for high-end restaurants. They know me. Yeah. I'm very rude with myself. I'm saying, yeah. look, we're going to this place for a little couple of drinks. We talk, mind our own business, and we kick. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very rude with it. So I'm not going to fake the funk and take someone somewhere where funk. I don't... I like that. Do you know what I mean? And take someone somewhere I'm going to take that. It's yours, fake you can have funk. it. But you don't pay me though. <laughs> I ain't paying you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I ain't not, paying you. No. I'm not going to take someone somewhere that I don't want to go. Yeah, that I don't yeah. want to pay for. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I'm not going to treat someone um, and give someone girlfriend or wife treatments when they're not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think, but it, it all depends if that's what the girl's used, for, used mm. to. Like, she's used to having Hakkasan for breakfast mm. or, uh, you know, whatever mm. they have, then if you're choosing to date her, then that's what you have to do. 100%. It's yeah. you at the yeah. end of the day that has to make the decision yeah. that, you know, this is the girl one and if this yeah. is the lifestyle she has, you're going to have to accommodate that. Yeah. I mean, you're allowed to have preferences too. Like, if that's what your wallet can do, then does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, like, no, 100%. Yeah. And obviously there's guys that would do that. And yeah, of course. There's guys that have got the funds to do it yeah. without worrying about it and yeah. they, they'll happily do it. And that's what I'm saying. People are filtering themselves and, and matching up but then sometimes we're selling ourselves short and we're selling ourselves for the long term instead of the sorry selling ourselves for the short term instead of the long term but what, what do you think the solution would be to better relations between guys and girls and particularly within like our ethnic group do, do you think there's an issue within our ethnic group in terms of like dating um, between black guys and black girls I, I was thinking this yeah, yeah. um I, I th yeah, I, I th feel like a lot of us should mm -hmm. date more. But obviously, you go through the necessary steps to become one with ourselves, including men, because mm -hmm. some of you men are a bit, mm -hmm. you know, a bit, you know. <laughs> a bit what? <laughs> no, some of you, yeah. you've just got a bit of rewiring to do. Mm -hmm. 
Um, is it just men that got rewiring to do or is it everyone? Is everyone in a fallen state? Because we can't just say it's men because I don't think the problem yeah, is Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone does. But yeah. sometimes like, I just don't feel like men are even aware. Men? Yeah, you're, do you know what yeah, I mean? Dad, yeah, dads. Yeah. And parents, essentially. Mm. But I just don't feel like some men are even aware that, oh, yo, I have to mm. change this. Like some men don't necessarily reflect on their behaviours and mm. are like, okay, why am I thinking like this um why is this but, my but what's this in relation to that what is it exactly that these men are doing like um let's be specific <laughs> and clear the air maybe like gaslighting maybe <laughs> oh is have i thrown it off a little bit no 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 i i get it um but gaslighting Okay, so gaslighting is when, okay. when you give a subjective truth and you push it as reality. So when you're constantly battering yeah, something yeah. on... But is that just a holy man thing? Like... Because gaslighting is is anybody. Like, people do. Women do it. Guys yeah, but I, I, I feel like... like in terms of relationships. But to be honest, I feel like women do so much mm. to better themselves. And I feel mm. like men have a I come as I am approach. And... Mm. I feel like men could also equally work on that. I feel like us women, we've gone through years of going to night vigil, we'll go to church, <laughs> we'll better ourselves. We, we go to master classes, we'll be on Eventbrite, we'll, we'll do loads, we read mm. books. You're, to you're talking ourselves. specifically about Christian women now, right? Because you're talking just, about night vigil, because I, ah! I, I don't think anyone else <laughs> that's is just from, general. from the Christian babes will be doing night vigil. Yeah? No, but then sometimes general. people are going to night vigil when really and truly what they should be doing is just, I mean, like yeah the night you know vigil night vigil was obviously and a talking joke to people <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I get it, I get night, it. night yeah. vigil was obviously a joke but i mm. just feel like women are they actively do more to better themselves mm. in terms of men i may be generalizing but maybe it's because us women are also vocal about it okay so, so you can correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like no okay so you're saying you're saying women are working on themselves and stuff yeah. like that but um what, what do let me ask you a question. What, what do women like in terms of like, let's say a, a man's um, aura? Like you guys like men with uh, masculine energy, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you guys like dominant guys, right? No, okay, you. Uh, let me not just speak So how do you women. know I like dominant men? I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So what do you like? Do you like, do you like a masculine man? A man that carries like an, an, an aura of protection, strength? Like yeah, decision making, decisiveness, yeah. like caring, various aspects, yeah. characteristics. Yeah, because I I like the feeling of being protected and okay. knowing that my man's yeah. holding shit. Down. But but then at the same time, you also find that women tend to ask guys to then balance that out with a lot of um what would be classified as feminine um um traits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in in um classical terms. Can't you so, have a balance though? Okay, if I ask you to have give me a balance of masculine and feminine energy <laughs> right now, yeah, how would you do that? But masculine energy, I mean, um, feminine energy, what does that come under? Because yeah. I feel like that's yeah. a neutral sentiment yeah. but okay, element so of you, you anyway. So you said you'd like the guy yeah, to be have that protective, strong aura about him, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Would you classically classify that to be a woman trait as well? Like it's into, A masculine energy. Yeah, like a strong, dominant masculine I energy. I think some women have masculine energies. Yeah. I mean... They're also able to be dominant in places that their men not men may not be able to yeah. not take charge of, but they're able to assert their own dominance in places that mm -hmm. is required of them. So yeah. I feel like women have a good yeah. balance. The, the the reason why I'm asking is so I've I've made an observation, um, personal research and through various friends and family like I, I've, I've been observing yeah so this is just my observation this is not the gospel yeah so i've realized that in a lot of relationships there's there's two forms of energy that runs the relationship there's yeah. the masculine and feminine energy there's the there's the yin and yang like I'm, t I'm just talking about difference here not necessarily female or male yeah i'm talking about the difference and i realized that when when the energy shifts so like let's say whoever's carrying the masculine energy let's say it shifts and becomes feminine it, it then oh, it then comes over to the other individual there becomes an issue there an imbalance mm -hmm. do you know what i mean there becomes an imbalance so me personally i think that to keep a relationship solid like that energy it needs to be kept at where it's kept so 
as Ken a man. Doesn't, the man should be purely masculine and the woman should be. But not in the terms of what nowadays we're defining masculinity as toxic and stuff. I'm talking about the protective. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not I'm talking toxic. about I'm talking yeah, about yeah. the protective side of things, yeah. yeah. And I think that when when the men lose it, that's when the relationship tilts sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just an observation I've made. I don't know what your thoughts on that. What what give me an example of this observation? So so for instance, how do I give an how do I give an example of this? The example I have in my head, yeah, is, is just too bait and obvious. I'm not really allowed to talk about. But <laughs> <laughs> no, say it. Okay, no, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it to you. So, okay, have you dated a dude, yeah, that initially within the relationship you found this dude very like you're you're drawn to the dude, yeah, he, yeah, he was very like masculine, very strong and attractive to you, yeah, and then he started losing that a bit. Have you ever been in that situation? Hmm. Think about it. That's, that's interesting. I have. And how did you feel when that happened? Don't flip this on me. <laughs> <laughs> See, now it gets interesting. Do you know why? Because I think you're getting the idea of what I'm talking about. Like, I am. Because I, I had this conversation with loads of female friends, and when I it took, it took me a while to explain it because it's just a random observation I made, yeah. but I, did, I didn't know how to put it into words. Do you see what I mean? And when I when I when I tried to explain it to them in my weird roundabout way, they were like, "Oh shoot, I get it." my energy changed and then I started looking at him differently and then it started gradually going downhill. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So it's a tricky part of um, relations that we don't really consider, but it happens okay. and it has a detrimental effect. Okay. Do you remember the first time we spoke and <laughs> you, I think you asked me, oh, um, what type of traits do I like in women? Do you remember what I said? No. What did I remember? say? What did you say? Uh, just a word that I used recently, just now, today. Don't know. I said I said something along the line that oh like I'm um, like my kryptonite is feminine women like I love them like I like, oh, I like. do you remember it now? yeah 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 <laughs> and that yeah, was during yeah. the time when I was making this observation yeah. through live experiences because obviously friends were going through stuff and they were telling me the scenarios yeah and I realized that they change in attitude and their behaviors were affecting their relationship can you give an example of what situation will make a man go feminine can i give one and yeah, then correct well, you, me you give one do you give one in my, Let, my let's view. let's say a man is um he's the leader he mm -hmm. e you know excuse um this dominant yeah type of behavior and then it's a good example for him to then like lose his job and then he becomes a little bit mm. reliant on yeah the woman that's and the word reliant he's he's yeah. sort of shows elements of vulnerability mm -hmm. Is is that? That's what I'm talking about. So that's what. Okay. So the, the reason why. So we've gone all around about. It, but what I'm saying is that. So that vulnerability that you just discussed yeah. is a is a part of some of the list that women give nowadays. But it doesn't. It, it. What I'm saying is that the list doesn't balance. It doesn't make sense, and it's very difficult for you to expect the man to have everything within that list. You want him to be this dominant masculine dude, mm. but at the same time as well, you want him to be this super. Um, um, vulnerable, someone that's, that that constantly goes on about his emotions and feelings and being vulnerable, but then you you don't you're not really real and honest about how that makes you feel once he starts exuding that type of, do you know what I mean? So you think parties should be honest about that? I don't no, think no, people no, even not that recognize be honest, that not, happens. No, not that you should be honest to tell the dude, yeah. but you should really look at the list and think, wait, does all of this make sense? Like, what are you trying to create here? Is this a character in a computer game? Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? We're expecting a lot from ourselves and from each other. Mm. That's what I'm talking about in terms of reviewing the list. It's not like being honest, like, oh, hi, babe. Um, nice to meet you, but I want you to be hench. I want you to be able to, like pay for everything in this household but at the same time I want you to cry when we're watching EastEnders together <laughs> I want you to be able, do you get I get it like yeah you, you, to be human is to like show some level of emotion and stuff but when when we have this expectation in the back of our mind it's not realistic and sometimes it's very difficult and damaging towards us trying to create but doesn't it doesn't it become damaging by the way the other party receives that emotion yeah, because I feel like an individual mm -hmm. that's built with you for such mm. a significant amount of time or mm. just a person that generally just likes you, wouldn't they be able to receive that in a good way? Oh, or? yeah, they, they should be able to receive in a good way. But when, when they start showing examples of these various um, characteristics, as we discussed, how did that make you feel at the time? Okay. 
that's when the honesty comes into it. Because whenever I talked about it with my female friends, off camera and off mic, they're like, no, I don't want my dude to be behaving like that. I don't want my dude to be like this. But when it comes onto a situation where we're having to have an honest discussion about it, then it's like, whoa, I don't know if I want to say that, but it's actually an honest part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? Like, what is it that you really want? Do you want him to be all of these things? Is it possible for him to be all of these things? Mm. As a man and as a woman, is it possible for her to be all of these things and more? Do you know what I mean? Okay, it's yeah. like the expectations that we have on each other, we need to be honest and realistic So do you them. think a man can have all of those things? I feel like you still can have a balance. I'm you, not you can have lie. a balance. You can have a balance. Yeah. But... I've I've seen what that balance does and it makes me question it. And that's the stage I'm in at the moment. I'm not denying, I'm not saying, no, you can't have all these balances, mm. but I've seen what it does. So I have to question it. And if I don't question it, I'm not doing my job right. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And that's the stage that I'm in at the moment. I'm thinking, okay, so these are all the things that they want, but if you exude this too much, then it's a problem. If you do this too much, then it's toxic. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So it's like masculinity. Now too much masculinity is classified as toxic masculinity. Yeah. What the hell is toxic masculinity? Do you know what I mean? Like, we, it's just good and bad people we're talking about here. Mm. Like, we, but, uh, What is toxic masculinity? I feel like it's just guys that just take pride in having situationships. and. It, it, that's just idiots isn't it like, but I, isn't I mean, that to- toxic but masculinity what, what's that got to do with because why, men? why do men take pride in showing toxic traits it's, it's, that, that's sense. what i'm saying it's it's, it's a it's, particular prat yeah, behaving yeah. like that but when, when we when we tag it with masculinity then you're you're basically you're basically covering every man do you know what i mean mm-hmm. with the same brush you're basically mm-hmm. painting everyone with the same brush yeah and that's why i don't like tagging and 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 all of that stuff, I don't get involved in it. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. I think it's, it's, I think it has a, as I discussed earlier on, it has a deeper, deeper problem than what we think it has on the surface mm-hmm. level. So I, I hate being like, oh my gosh, um, women are this and guys are this because nah, not everyone is. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Course. We're talking about a set group of people. But yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. So I'm, I'm, I'm questioning it now. It's like, what is it that these guys want? You know what I mean? When the list is so endless, yeah. and and when you exude all of the things within the list, it can clash and become problematic, mm-hmm. and then the reactions towards you change. Mm-hmm. So that's where we at. It's very interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's it's something to think about. It's Definitely. Food for I mean, Definitely. I've never ever had, you know, that sort of discussion brought up where yeah. a guy shows is masculine mm. and then it switches up. Like we never really realized that, okay, wait, hold on. This yeah. trait that he's mm-hmm. displaying is yeah. femininity. In, and, and then how is your reaction to that? Do you know what I mean? Uh, ask your friends, when, ask your friends the question if they've been in a situation where a guy's energy Do you changed. know what? Looking back, uh, I still stand by the point that they, they've had, they, mm. this, this has been shown in the situations that they've mm. been in. And still, I feel like women have been very supportive of that. Mm. Obviously, it... Does Did it the dynamics change? Because being supportive and changing dynamics is completely different. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Does the dynamics change? That is the true question. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, looking back, that burger <laughs> listen okay so we stop. so you just had the most amazing burger we just had like a fat burger with this size <laughs> so we're slumped we're right slumped, now. But it's so bad yeah, yeah but the dynamics i'd have to i'd have to think back to mm. it because do you know i feel like we experience so much and you never really know when one party is mm. being honest about what they're saying i feel like women have experienced so many things that we're not able to tell when someone is genuinely telling the truth Mm. or is lying Mm. like some guys they may show this this side to them Mm. maybe when they want to exit i know it's a quick exit route you Mm. know let's give an example oh you know so and so's go this is going on like i once dated a dude and then Mm out of nowhere he never mentioned prior to the time that we were talking that anything was wrong with Mm. his um parent then after a Mm. while things got deeper oh okay this is going on with his mom Mm. um he's worried he doesn't know like 
you know, uh, what should... When he left you based on what's going on at home. He didn't leave, but mm. the dynamics changed, which is, mm. which is where, like, I have to question, like, were you being honest about that from the start? Because mm. it wasn't necessarily something that you had initially brought up, mm. which is why I say to people that you really should just be up front. Like, if you're generally mm. not ready, then just mm. don't 100%. date. Like, yeah. if you don't really want to share what's going on with your relative mm. or you, then you don't have to. Yeah. You, just don't have to date. Yeah. So, which is why I don't think women realise it because sometimes to them, to obviously myself included when I was dating, it's, it could be looked at like an exit strategy. Mm. So, I don't know, but mm. yeah. Yeah, it, I mean... It, it just depends on the situation. Yeah, I mean, like, touching on that, definitely. On, honesty is key. So, yeah. when before you get into the situation, you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. I mean, do you feel yeah. like the example that I gave kind of related yeah, did, to what I said? Exactly. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. And it helped is, me out with my point as well because I was going around yeah. in circles as I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's fine. Which is why I don't think women generally mm. realise that, wait, hold on, the dynamics has changed. Because so mm. it's it not something depends. that we think about and there's so many aspects to it that sometimes we don't have the conversation about. So it's like, how are we supposed to figure out certain things if we're not really talking about them? Yeah. And they're all internalised. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and the more I'm starting to use my brain <laughs> and think more, I'm starting to realise more and I'm starting to question more and it's helping me solve situations. And, and what I always do is whenever a theory or something comes into my head, I, I now replay back to my own life and look at previous experiences of what happened and I'm able to then piece the puzzles together where I went wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes we leave situations and we're like, oh, it's the person's fault. The person oh, yeah, done this, yeah. the person done that. Yeah, We've then, always got a part to play. Oh, 100%. 100%. Well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I've, there's never been a situation where I've left and it's been 100% the other person's fault. Oh, yeah, of like, course. Like, never. Do you if know what you're mean? still in that, then people have a long way yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, definitely. Like, and th that's where the honesty part comes into. So, obviously, you have yeah. to be honest with yourself first. Like, are you ready for this situation? That's what I'm saying. And what is it that you want out of this situation? Yeah, are you then, ready to be transparent with the other party, 100%. Like. and then go in and out straight away it's like okay if if i dip my foot in there and it, it wasn't the, the water i wanted it wasn't the temperature i wanted then no point dragging it yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? boom exit mm -hmm. and just keep it moving do you yeah. know what i mean there's no point like distracting anyone's flow in that but um yeah so one one last question i'm gonna ask you so um like what is the difficulties for black women dating because the reason why I'm asking is there's a, I mean, I, I see a lot about the difficulties of you guys dating online. I see people talking about it continuously. So I want to hear it directly from you. Like, what is some of the difficulties? Obviously, you're, you're not even in difficulties now because you're at the game. Yeah. You're like at the game. At the game. So no know. one's sliding in the DM right now. You're at the game. <laughs> no, no, no. I, oh, you still, I still slides? get DMs, but oh, okay. it's like, I'm just very upfront with what I'm about right now. Yeah. And that's just not the energy that yeah. I really want. Um, mm. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. What's the difficulties? I feel like with black women, mm. black women are doing so well mm -hmm. nowadays mm -hmm. that it should even be me asking you mm. why aren't some of our women or mm. my sister's wives because they're, mm. they're doing everything. But it could be doing well. That doesn't mean that they, good, the person's a good person or a good match. Yeah, but what? what okay, but... <laughs> let's, be, let's be real about it. <laughs> like, I'm being real. Like, no, but, you but could be doing great in life, but it doesn't mean you're a right match for someone. It could be... I mean, you could be... You could be an evil person indoors. You could be a trash partner. It doesn't mean anything, do you? No, well. but... You're, you guys are doing okay, great academically. Why, why is the vast majority single? Like, I, I to be honest, okay, it doesn't make it, sense. See, the, this is, this, I actually set you up and you come back 360. It's a 360 going full circle. Is that yeah, 360? So you come back 360. Yeah. So remember, when we, like remember when we started? Did, did I flip on myself again? You flip yourself. And I, and I was waiting Do you know what? I hate years. flipping on myself. <laughs> no, no, you I didn't flip it. on yourself. I, I kind of just set you up. So what? initially at the start of this podcast, yeah, oh, here we go. I discussed the, eight, I told you about the 80 20 rule. Yeah. And this was researched by various like dating sites and various forums that a large group of women are chasing a small group of men. So you're talking about... No, I didn't flip on myself, actually. No, yeah, no, you didn't. I know where you're coming. You didn't. But so you're talking about all these women that are doing fantastically well and um, are excelling in life and so forth. This is a large pool chasing a small pool of, of dudes. But so how see, does that do, work? Do you, do you see how I'm not mean? flipping on myself? Because I literally mm. said to you in the beginning mm. that doesn't that mean you guys... 
not necessarily uh, have to level up, but no, uh, no, because the thing is, I think it's still a case of going upwards. Because okay, I think if you was to ask any researcher, psychologist, wherever, yeah, they'll say men are likely to date sideways and downwards. Yeah, mm-hmm. women are very likely to date sideways and upwards. So already the balance is is not there. Yeah. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the balance is not there. Like, do you? As I said before, I think I gave a similar example. Do you see a dude and be like, oh, okay, let's say you're on 100K. You see a dude be like, oh, oh, he's on 20K, but yeah, he's got some great eyes though. I'm going mar- <laughs> to I'm gonna marry him and we're going to have kids together. Yeah. Have you ever heard a girl say that before? Nah. Never. Whilst I've heard plenty of guys be like, oh, she's a receptionist. She's cool. She's on 17K. I'm on 100K, but she's fine and I'm still going to date her and marry her. Do you see what I mean? So there's, there's something in there. I don't know what it is. Like, I can't, I'm, but then I'm getting doesn't there. That- doesn't that boil down to at the end of the day we still need someone to be the protect protector yeah, in yeah. our household mm-hmm. men are always going to be seen as the breadwinner so yeah. it's only right mm-hmm. that we try to aim for someone who we deem mm-hmm. will be able to protect us in the future yeah and i get it i'm not saying this, this is a problem with this yeah but i'm saying it is something that is happening okay do you see what i mean and maybe i'm saying maybe that that could be the reason why there's a disparity okay potentially so if you look at it on a broader scale it could be the reason because if men are going side down and women are going side up there's going to be a disparity mm-hmm. do, you, do you see what i'm saying no, i get you i get you so that's where it comes into it and then the power is then in the hands of the few who are being chased by not being chased by but are sought after by the many mm-hmm. and that's where the game lies see in terms of like statistics mm. and that i w- mm. i wouldn't really mm. really know the only point that i could probably make is that you know mm. men i'm, <laughs> I'm so anti men i'm not anti men <laughs> i promise <laughs> um besides the fact that you know us women do want a protector mm. i feel like is it that do, do you know what at the end of the day Okay, let's be honest. At I, times, are you the saying that there's men in, in a particular court. community who are not doing well enough that need to step up their game? That's that's what you've been trying to say, right? No. <laughs> well, if if we're if it's based on the argument that you gave mm. that you know there's a disparity mm. between the two, then yeah, step up your game. But then, at the end of the day, I don't know if this point relates, but mm. it's the men that are gonna. I don't know. What are the difficulties? Um, the difficulties is, I, I think with men, it's the, it's the expectation. Expectation in... Like what we've been discussing this whole time, the expectation about like being the breadwinner, being yeah. the protector, being everything. Like it's, it's an expectation that carries heavy weight on a lot of dudes' backs. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And it's an expectation that not everyone can adhere to and they run away from... Yeah. Even even look, let's something simple as moving to girls. It's not an easy game. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, I've heard. Men got girls got to realize that the young men are the the fear of a young man moving to a girl is is high because you got to remember, we, to us is a game of like learning to deal with the rejection. Especially men who maybe it wasn't not... like this before though. No, it wasn't like this because obviously the game is changed now. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? The, the the game is changed now. Is in is in you guys' court. You guys are displaying yourself like it's in your court now. Yeah. Like a, a large part of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So in that in that sense that the game has changed now, you gotta realise that we're always having to do the approach. Like you're not gonna go up and move to any guy. When's the last time you moved okay, to a guy? Okay, okay. I think the last time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have you ever moved to a guy before? <laughs> no. See, how would you feel about moving to a guy? I, I wouldn't do it. How do you feel? Do you know like, what? I will right do it about... just to say that I've done it once in my life. But the reason why I probably haven't mm-hmm. is just because I don't want to be rejected. Like, you don't have I, to. I don't See, want rejection, to feel that. Rejection yeah, yeah. Is, a, is, a, is a fear, right? Yeah, of course, of yeah, course. And fear is, is something that's crippling. But it happens to everyone. So you just No, but get when it, it comes to way. relations, men are doing, they move into and getting rejected to more than Because men are hunters. Yeah. So you yeah. got to remember, that's, some, that's another hurdle that we've got to climb. Yeah. Like you see that pretty girl across the room, she's not just going to automatically come over to you. Or mm-hmm. well, sometimes some dudes get it like that. Yeah. But most dudes have to take the step to approach the lady. And to do that, that takes a lot of courage that alone that's the first step and yeah. then the second step is to get her attention enough on her phone for you to even get a date because now girls got various options yeah so you're there messaging her whilst 
Femi, Kwame, Kwame. Jerome, Tyrone, <laughs> Abdul. Everyone else is sending her pictures yeah. and, and moving to her and sliding in her DMs. So you got to, you got to fight through that as well. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's a whole bunch of hurdles. I to guess climb one argument get... that I can say is probably just women aren't settling, and I know it's their eighty twenty. So, in a sense, you are mm. right. In a sense, the theory that I laid out at the start makes sense, yeah. but it's weird and it needs to be looked into a bit deeper. I'm going to look into it a bit deeper. But do you, know what's, gonna... do you know what's funny? Because I feel like this, I was saying this to my friend, this just mm. happens between like the black community, the black British community. Mm. Like This could be a wild generalization again, mm. but obviously I live in Essex and... Gr- <laughs> Essex, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. and being around them, they have different thought Mm. process processing to the way we think of Mm. things like with them they don't have to factor in all these financial factors this Mm. um the silly Um, body count factor mm. like they don't have to think of that Mm. they're just like oh we click you Mm. click with me i click with you like let's get going but i feel like with like the black british culture we've just got so much elements that we have to think of. And maybe it's because of how we've been brought up. Maybe yeah. the white people didn't struggle yeah. the I way think, we did. Yeah. But I T- think, yeah. yeah. So touching on what you mentioned, the struggle and stuff, yeah. I think with us, yeah, the biggest word to sum up what you're saying is probably validation. Mm-hmm. Like we love validation. Yeah. And we need validation. It's like, so it's, that could be the like reason why. It's like a unified why. currency. Like we need gratification, <laughs> like validation to be like, oh, I'm a I'm a black dude and I've yeah. done this. Yeah. I'm a black woman and I've done this. And yeah. we need you guys to look at us to be like, oh, look what I've achieved. We 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 crave that validation. Yeah. And that probably plays a part in even in our dating scene. It's like you need to have that dude. You know what I mean? You need to you need to bag that girl yeah. to gain the validation. Hundred. Do you see what I mean? And that's probably why it's like that. Whereas Oimbos, o- Abronis, they don't go they don't, through this. They don't. They're just yeah. like, yeah, like we'll make it work. Because it's their is is it's their land at the end of the day. So it's like the, the, who they're seeking validation from, not from yeah. you and me. Yeah. Whilst we're seeking validation from our community and uh, and the external community mm-hmm. that's looking inwards. Yeah. And that's where we get that whole issue yeah. and why we're constantly seeking for the validation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where that comes from. 100%. But totally, but we're definitely going to catch up again because we're, we're not done. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we're not we're done. Not. I feel and like we could go around. We could go this forever and ever. Time. And ever. Like, but obviously, you got a lot to do today. You got another wonderful article that you got coming up for the Metro, right? Yes, what, what, I do. What, what I other do. works you got coming up? Like, what's happening? Um, I've got a lot i've got a new radio show that's coming up so you're gonna see me about you're gonna see me active probably on a tuesday between the hours of 9 to 11 um i will be bringing back my blog Mm. again i know it was inactive for quite a while so you need to jump back on a couple of your social medias as well we need to see you on Instagram. You snap a little bit. You tweet a lot, but I'm, I tweet I'm, a lot. I'm scared of Twitter, man. I haven't been on. You I'm need on, to jump on, especially, especially especially for the pod, 100. percent Yeah, but I, likewise with me, I I don't even know I'm. Yeah, on I'm definitely need to jump on because obviously yeah. I've got I've got a lot of opinions. I've got a lot of things that's going in my head that maybe I need to discuss with people. But I find Twitter the worst place for me to discuss a lot of my deeper opinions because it's just too many people just yeah. chatting at each other. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, if it's yeah. not something that you want big engagement about, then probably yeah. keep it to your circle. Yeah. And, no, you know, I mean, I home. prefer it in this type of setting. Yeah, Cause here yeah. we can actually unpack and really properly like dissect 100%. stuff and have a continuous dialogue. And what happens here, what, I, what I'm starting to realize is that every time I have, I have a podcast with someone, they go back, think about it. And then they'll start hitting me up. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what as soon as these cameras off I was going to be like yeah we need to talk about this one. And, and that's what I love about it now so the yeah. conversations will never end again I like it that's what you know happened what I mean? with my article I mm. went out and people were like so what was the message after this and I was yeah. like wait hold on yeah. that article the 650 words you should have formed your opinion yeah, 100%, but yeah. it sparks more conversation but in a sense I love it as well mm. that's why I'm in the field of yeah. journalism so yeah. and, and in conclusion what, what would you like to say to those aunties and parents that are on their kids back about marriage like how should they approach the situation if they should get involved at all um i definitely feel like you should be easy mm-hmm. i think you should continuously spread words of encouragement and positivity 100%. and just keep your own wishes in prayer for them mm-hmm. and not to belittle the other aspects of their life that they've 
got going on, put that on a pedestal just as much as you Amazing. want them to marry and obviously just be them, be there for them, but mm. don't put too much pressure on them mm. wanting to be mar- wanting to be married to the fact that they will then go and find any Tom Dick mm. or Debo, you know. <laughs> yeah. Such a random neighbor, yeah. you know. But yeah, just just be there and yeah, focus on other stuff. It's not the be and all. Mm. Like there's still some people that aren't married and they're thriving what in what they do. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, that's and what I can say. I mean, and in following up to that, um, one thing I like to say is that what what the aunties and uncles, whatever in our community, um, need to understand is that first of all they need to be the example. Hundred so, percent. So, yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. And in in the famous words of my 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 online mentor Jordan Jordan Peterson, is that clean your own damn room before yeah. you go out there and try and change the 100%. world. Hundred percent. You know what I mean. So if you're not showing them anything better, they're not gonna want. Anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean. Set so, that example. So you gotta set that example. You gotta yeah. be that main go to for them to know what marriage is about, what yeah. the world is about, 100%. and what true love is. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Hundred percent. Totally. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, love. Thanks for having me. We're gonna me. continue this. <laughs> <laughs>